Hello drawing students. Well this is going to be part two of the texture assignment that we were doing and as you can see my texture now is nice and dry. Um, it's not coming off if I, if I do any type of movement to it and you can see how if, if, um, if you use gesso uh, it, it has a tooth to it. It has a surface that you can draw onto and that's what's great about gesso is that you can put gesso on anything and, uh, and make it a drawing surface so that could be any type of um, cardboard structure um, most surfaces any type of wood surface and a lot of artists have used gesso in that manner to to draw or put an interesting surface on a three-dimensional object so it can be used for a lot of different things not just for priming canvases so hopefully you had a good time with that and hopefully you did create some actual texture you know texture that is raised off the plane of the paper or the surface and you can actually touch and feel. Uh, today what we're going to do is add more value to that and see how we can continue on with that textural surface. You also have that underneath uh, tonal mark making gesture that we created so hopefully that can also help you uh, or guide you into some more tones and maybe we can make some more three-dimensionality get some definition into this shape. Uh, the only thing is that you have to work with the texture now. So how you apply your charcoal, it's going to be influenced by how the texture is. Uh, so I want you to work with that. You have to work with the directional flow of that texture. Uh, so um, um, make a, uh, make sure that your idea is harmonious or your tonal arrangements that you're going to be adding with charcoal is in harmonious or is in harmony with the uh, texture that you've created. What I have uh, today that I'm going to be using um, is my charcoal pencil. I have also uh, my vine charcoal ready to go. I have my compressed charcoal, okay, um, and uh, my kneaded eraser. I also have my white eraser, so I can really get down with some erasing. And uh, obviously a sharpener so I can keep my line sharp and really control the, the the mark that I'm going to be making and all I'm going to do is really just uh, look at what I have and just begin to think about where would I like to create some dimension um, so I have this snake s uh, form here this kind of a, a really interesting uh, uh, textural surface that, that I think happened here with the ribbed pattern movement and then onto the flowing line so you know but in between here you know, these kind of uh, negative points or these negative spaces, I'm going to just start there and start darkening some spaces so I can get some separation from this snake form from the background. Remember, uh, uh, hopefully we can uh, understand the aspect of foreground, background, and, and start to create some distance. Again, this is all depending on how you applied your texture. So how I'm approaching it is going to be very different. But again, this demonstration, since we're doing more creative drawing, is just how, how I would approach this, this painting or this uh, drawing. And, you know, hopefully you'll develop your own system or something will uh, happen if you allow the process and the act of doing it, uh, uh, if you allow the process to guide you uh, or to guide your creativity, like I've always said. So all I'm going to do here is start uh, just darkening in some areas and I'll zoom in in a bit. Right. And you'll see how when I start adding some charcoal uh, uh, to the to the paper, it's going to look a lot different on the gesso in comparison to on the paper. So uh, work with that surface, uh, work with. Uh, how that material lays onto the gesso versus the paper. I'm gonna come down, down here and add a little bit more. Again, I'm kind of emphasizing these curves here. And really, you know, when you're kind of doing work like this, first realize that you're using a, a very forgivable material. Meaning that, you know, charcoal here is, is, you know, we can take it off. So don't be afraid just to start placing or uh, material on the paper. Again, the fact that you are moving, looking, applying shadow, right, um, uh, will help you design, you know, so you, you, it, it's, you should just go at it. You know, you should just approach it with confidence. You know, something, yeah, let's, fraction of a second of an idea to place material there, do it. Don't worry about it. Okay. 
All right, I'm gonna come down here, add a little bit more. You can see how I'm not really being accurate just yet. I mean, I have my charcoal pencil, I have my graphite pencils um, later on that I can use for some finer edges. But right now I'm just starting to create some shape, right? Not necessarily definition, just emphasize some, sh some main shapes that I've created. And be sure to always, when you're approaching a creative drawing or a drawing like this, approach it consistently, meaning that you apply the energy throughout the whole plane instead of automatically focusing in on a certain area and spending a lot of energy in that certain point. Now, again, go with what feels good. Um, that's really important. Uh, but uh, if you feel blocked, if you feel that you don't know what to do with the rest of the painting and you really just focus on an area, force yourself to continue to make some marks. If it's just something at the bottom, just to apply a little bit of charcoal down there. So you're just dispersing some of that energy throughout this surface. So you're not so confined in one area, right? Okay. So I've just zoomed in a bit. And if I put my hand here, you can see some of the texture that I have on my gesso that I'm just going to quickly play with. Now, I think that uh, a good way to start is with your vine charcoal. Um, so uh, again, you know, follow a process, uh, unless you have some solid ideas and, um, you know, already know which direction you want your mark making to go. But if you don't start with something soft, get some tones in there before you start with some co high contrast or some dark contrast and, and detail. So, uh, uh, you know, play with shape first. And that's going to be really important with, with, a, with creative drawing or trying to build uh, an image from your subconscious is to play with the basic shapes first. And then we'll go into the details of the images in, that are going to appear. Um, so all I'm going to do here is just emphasize some of this surface here by just adding a little charcoal. Now, uh, remember, just adding more material rather than drawing. So I just want to see what I can emphasize here. So I'm turning my charcoal sideways and it's really just touching the, the, the top surface, right? And I mean, you know, and that's, that's really interesting in itself. You know, uh, it's, 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 it's created some value. It's creating some directional flow. And sometimes, you know, something that easy is effective depending on what you're trying to accomplish or what, what you're trying to simulate or what you're trying to uh, say with texture or create some content, you know. So, uh, you know, be sure to uh, tread lightly when you work with some of these types of material because you're dealing with a, a good clean layer of gesso and once you approach it too aggressively you know it's hard to get that that stark whiteness black so oh back so go ahead and you know uh, tread lightly but i'm going to do the same thing at the bottom here and see where that takes me okay just barely touching it that's really creating some nice uh movement and flow emphasizing that um that brush stroke in a in a certain way that uh you know I'm getting some good ideas already of what I can do but again I'm I'm not I'm not going too aggressive with it. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Okay, because you know again I'm not I'm not really worried about um detail right now. And I'm not gonna rub it because I kinda like what's happening there. So next step I'm going to uh, switch to some compressed charcoal now so I can get some definition in this in this area right here. So now I can start to build up a little bit of contrast. Again, it's all going to depend on on what you come up with and what you start to see in combination from your subconscious and whatever is happening in you know in your in your mind. Um, and also, how that texture is dried and what you've done with it and, and uh, what charcoal, how charcoal wants to uh, collaborate with it. See, I'm adding a little contrast right there, okay, separating some form, okay. Coming down here, back to the bottom here.
I've got these kind of my pattern starting here of my uh, texture, so I'm going to start to slowly get a little more accurate, but again, not, not really a worry about detail. Again, remember, I got my eraser in a bit that I'm going to start to erase and draw with that. So remember that the, the gum eraser is a drawing tool. Really treat it as such. As a, there's another way to make a mark. Okay, come right here. Okay, now I'm going to move down to this here. Here's a really important part of, of my texture. It's probably the where I really had the rhythm make the best uh, curved uh, textural form there. So, you know, uh, if you have a focal point or your your um, the area that you know you like the best or you want people to emphasize, you know, be, you know, make sure that you're a little more accurate in those points, those those areas of importance focal point. But again, see, I can come back in with my vine charcoal and really get that edge real nice and clean. So it's really interesting when you work in stages like this, uh, where you, you're giving yourself almost like hurdles that you have to cross, right, in, or, or, or jump over in order to create an image. So throwing down a random texture, challenging the surface and then having you problem solve working with that formally with color with shadow with whatever it is and then and then you know being uh you know and then starting to notice what appears what happens so there's almost like no way that you can get into a um, a block right a mental block if you don't worry about initially what it is exactly you know let the process and the experience guide that Okay, I'm zooming out here, right? Let me see, I'm gonna look around. You know, got some interesting things here. Of course, that's like the bottom of that snake tail form. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to emphasize some form here. Again, remember, I'm just adding some contrast in those, in those areas first. Those main shapes, the main places or the, or, or the the main areas of the shape of the overall form that you want to emphasize. Now, how do we know that that, which one is the correct one? Well, that's really where you have to trust your instinct, you know, and, uh, and there's no right or wrong when you, when you do that. The, all there is, is, you know, a lot of um, anxiety and fear, <laughs> but, oh, I don't know if that's the right decision. Don't worry about it, you know? Remember, what makes a dynamic drawing or a dynamic piece of art is when you sh show the decision making that the artist, you know, is is um, is having to work with while creating that image. You know, so it's a journey of form. It's a journey of decision making. It's a journey of shadow and texture, just like how one would walk right on a trail you know, in the forest or in the desert or wherever that would be and have to work with whatever they're encountering, right? And uh, accept it and work with it. So here's a zoom out frontal view of the first phase or stage of, of how I would approach a drawing like this. Um, and you can see how I've kind of dispersed some of the uh, contrast around so I can start to get some sort of a definite shape of that um, of this snake form here um, and so this is important this stage right here is, is just to step back and look at it constantly um, that's part of, of the design or, or a way to approach a drawing is do not forget to stand back two three steps six feet or so and look at it from a distance so you can kind of see how the forms start to merge in together um, also, remember to disperse that energy throughout. You see how, you know, swiftly I kind of made some marks. I made sure that I, that, I can, that I had a plan that I wanted to go and complete this diagonal form, right? So I can start to already have some negative space composition here. So as you're going, make these decisions, but you have to step back and you have to look at them and then start to decide, okay, well, after I do this, I'm not ready for detail just yet. I know that eventually I'm going to come in here and really work on these uh, ribbed 
textural forms. I'm going to come in and probably do some erasing around this uh, swiping of the charcoal, clean up some of these curves real nice later, but I'm not going to worry about that right now because uh, I want you to work in phases. So step one, start with that vine charcoal first before you get into any of your uh, compressed charcoal or your, or your um, with charcoal pencil or any of your detail work. Um, I'm going to want to go ahead and start to go, okay, well, you know, instead of working too much into these areas, I'm going to already start to disperse some energy into the background here, you know, in these areas to see what I can come up with. So I'm going to start just to simply get my vine charcoal and, and to start to just simply separate some of these segments here. Um, pretty easy at this point. Again, I'm, I'm starting with my vine. And let's see if I can get some separation and follow that pattern. Remember, that background that I've created here is really just to um, just create a lot of separation from that S form or the snake form and the geometry in the background. So I want you to play with separating that foreground from that background. Okay, now simply I'm gonna do a little bit of smudge work here just so I can soften that. I'm gonna go back in there later on with my um, vine charcoal, I mean my uh, eraser, my gum eraser to get that pretty clean. But remember, you got to lay down material first before you do anything. And you see how I'm not worried about the accuracy too much right now. I mean, I'm, I'm guiding my hand, but no, I'm not worried about it. Because when I come back with some um, definite line or some defining some edges with my charcoal pencil, well then, then I'll have a little bit more control. Okay, so just kind of continuing on to kind of work in that background loosely before I begin to add some detail. Now I'm going to go ahead and start that right now. Um, at some point, you know, you can start to mix and match some of your processes. i have got a wedge here sculpted in my vine charcoal, and I'm just going to see what happens when I clean up as I go. Just to highlight some of these areas. And slowly I'm going to start to define some of these forms again allowing the the texture to guide some of that form you have to work with that okay I'm going to go ahead and move upward here so let's see uh, let me, uh, yeah I think up here I'm going to go ahead and work in that same diagonal Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do my smooth out. Being conscious of that um, edge here of that snake form, so I'm just going to add a little bit more. Remember, you can only get your uh, vine charcoal so dark, so it's not going to do much after a certain amount. Remember, I'm just kind of allowing that charcoal to create some some definition here, but I'm really enjoying this this almost fiery edge that it's creating. So. And you see how I didn't really anticipate that. That just happened in that moment that I just, you know, that I spoke about it. And I can do something with that. So pay attention to that type of, uh, type of um, imagery or, or uh, inspiration that kind of 
starts to uh, occur from simply adding material. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, wander around my eye and just make sure I'm observing everything. As I'm proceeding on, you are to step back and take a look at your drawing and, and you know, from a, from a wide point of view and continue, continuously look. Continuously move your eye around, step back, add some material. And I'm going to go ahead and work on the background here because I think I can do some interesting separation because I, you know, I want that consistency in the background. So I'm going to move. Remember, you're not moving fast. I want you to do the same thing too. You know, your eye should dance around the surface. If you have an idea to put a mark, put a mark down. Don't worry about it. You know, so you know, a type of work like this, there has to be some action involved in a sense of your body, your movement, and, and your approach. And it's because we're dealing with very, very random kind of movements, and you know, you, there's only so much you can control that gesso. So, uh, there we go. Again, I'm trying to get that edge separated from that form, and that seems to be happening pretty nicely. Okay, I'm gonna quickly change to my eraser. So I can just get a little bit of, you know, just some sharpness into there. As, as subtle as that is, it creates a little sharp line, and um, it will it will uh, it will create an effect, a nice effect. Bring some of that uh, nice contrast too from the uh, white of the gesso to that edge of that charcoal when you swipe that eraser. Remember, just touches here, almost like you're applying just layers of paint, except you're, you're working with the negative application. You're taking stuff off. Okay, so that's enough for me right now. I can go ahead and move on. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna keep moving. So what I want you to do, I want you to keep moving. Okay, let's get this part down here at the bottom corner because I want that to, to really get this I want to define this curve right here, so let me do this again. Okay. Still working with my fine charcoal. Not really, I haven't really moved from that yet. I've had some erasing. Okay, but let's go ahead and define that. Don't forget about that corner. Always work towards the very edge and keep moving. Okay. Now that movement is going to really allow that. Okay, hit the corner over here, zoom in, so I can really get some good, get that anchor down. I mean, you don't want, you know, I don't want my form to be floating in midair. I want that background to be consistent throughout, all the way to the edge. Once you put some material over there, it's going to, it's going to add to the frequency. But definitely swift movement. And don't start making marks at some point. Just keep going, keep flowing. Okay, switch over to some erasing. sharp edge just subtle sharp edge happening there almost looks kind of a uh, water a uh, kind of water ripple and, and I kind of like that of course that might change 
keep that movement. If you're into a flow or into a zone, you know, don't stop. Keep going until the very end. Okay. Now let's take a look. Okay, over here as well. Let me go ahead and finish this corner out. Again, I want you to keep that movement. shadow again I want to concentrate on this edge over here because I want that definition and that's all going to depend on what you're going to be doing but I, I, I hope what you're seeing here is how I'm approaching it pretty aggressively and sometimes creative drawing it, 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 that's what you need to do you just need to you need to just start applying material And it feels really good too. So, I mean, um, not to mention the therapeutical aspects of of these types of practices and making art in general. There you go. See, I'm, I'm even kind of swiping that in a random way. Okay. I'm happy with that. Okay, so you can see how I have filled out my background and I've done some cleanup with my eraser around the edges just to make sure that I have my background completely filled in in the back. Remember, always use the whole page, right? Uh, uh, especially with an assignment like this so we can really create some separation. I'm, I'm kind of getting like this uh, angle from like the, from looking downward uh, like I'm seeing a snake on the ground looking from above uh, I think that's interesting so I'm gonna get my ruler out and try to get some straight erasing lines trying to uh, do the do the carve out but with some straight lines to get some almost like a, a bamboo mat or something of some sort or some sort of a tiling but anyways you know um, be sure to take a look at it and I'm going to go in now and, and, and also add some more definition with maybe the uh, compressed charcoal and the charcoal pencil in some of these areas so I can get these ridges nice and clean. So always remember to look at the drawing and uh, uh, in order to start to envision possibilities that could happen within the, uh, the forms and, and of course the randomness and all of that stuff. So uh, take a look at it and then continue on now. Uh, we can add definition and so I'm going to start with my charcoal pencil here and begin some definition and you know you, you can definitely judge how much definition or accuracy you want but I do want or think that you need to try to get some accuracy within all this chaos a lot of times you can easily go oh man there's so much going on uh i just don't want to i just don't see if i can get any detail because you know uh, the way i've applied this material it's random um but you see how i'm finding individual sections here or or creating them by following some of that previous form so uh, I do want you to try to find it because that's what a lot of uh, making art is all about is finding either the inspiration or finding the uh, form within the medium or the, uh, the technique that you are working with. So you can see how just simply right there how, you know, I'm already <laughs> developing some really cool, you know, um, I don't know, uh, almost like a seahorse type of a pattern here. So, you know, you know, I can, I can do that all the way through, you know, um, let me go ahead and get a, get a little erasing here. Maybe I can make that a little bit more of a, 
There we go, a little feathered, softer, glowing spine. Okay, so I'm moving on. You can see how I'm starting to define those spine forms more and more as I go along. You know, and at this point you really just, or I'm really just trying to create that consistency of pattern since I've locked on to a certain idea. And that's when you just go with it. You just really treat it like a pattern. And again, I'm trying to create some separation between the, um, the uh, snake form and the background. So kind of way, it kind of just creating an outline, honestly, just an outline with a pattern. Really that simple. And I'm kind of being, you know, not too accurate with it because again, I, I want some sort of a, you know, natural organic kind of form here since it's kind of taking on a, obviously an amphibious, definitely amphibian form. So, um, and then later on I can go inside these uh, spaces in between here and, and get some, get some good, get some good tone. Again, I have my stick here so I can lean up against that stick. I like drawing vertically, obviously. So, uh, you'll have your own process going. So I'm going to continue on, probably fast forward a little bit and then, uh, move on to that background now. So in the background up here, I'm going to get my straight edge and I figure out a kind of a cool way to create some uh, contrast of form here with my geometric or my more pattern base and then my uh, compared to my uh, organic snake form here. So I'm just going to lay that down and see what this does. I already did one and I kind of like it. So again, it's I'm getting kind of a, a perspective from uh, looking above but uh, onto kind of a, a uh, you know a snake form on the floor so I think this kind of uh, me putting some geometry in the background will create some nice contrast and separation I'm gonna try a few sh this way seeing what happens if anything it's just kind of creating more complexity and uh, creating more layering. So even though it doesn't, it, you know, it, sometimes your ideas don't necessarily always work, uh, the fact that you altered the plane and the uh, material some, in, in some way, you know, will create a, a, some sort of dimension or layer in itself. Then I can go back in there and maybe add some more positive lines. So let me do that. Okay, now, now I'm gonna get some more structure in there, maybe with a, a straight line in the back. And that's creating a definite contrast of form from the, compared to the background. Might be too strong, so I'm gonna go in there and do a little, soften it a little bit. Another thing I can do is probably go right next to that one. I'm gonna go right next to that one and then use a little vine charcoal so then I can have some, there you go. Blur that edge, edge just soften it a bit so it's not so sharp. There we go, okay, over here. And I'm going to continue on with that vertical line work. We'll be here real fast. Okay. And sometimes it's it's pretty simple, you know. I mean, 
it, it's, I, you know, I'm really enjoying some of the illusion that's being created here with uh, just a combination of patterns here. And it really all has to do with, again, simple understanding of separation between pattern, geometric form, organic form, contrast, emphasizing certain uh, spots and places, creating focal points. I'm going to try to go horizontally here on this one, see how this looks instead. I want to just glide that charcoal pencil over so it's almost like a, a light line instead of really creating too much sharpness. That geometry is already really strong. So I just need a little bit more support. I'm going to do a little zoom in here. So with this, th these sets of uh, gradients and grids here. I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to see if I can emphasize some points here with the compressed charcoal to make a real kind of a dashed that's some strong dark contrast there and let's see what happens. Again, you know, I like working in systems where I'm kind of repeating a certain mark over and over again for a matter of time anyways. Okay, and I created some interesting camera. I'm going to do a little bit of softening. And then you see I can overlap that with a little erasing. And then, you know, you can go as far as you want and really as complex as you want. Clean that up a little bit. And again, I think I'm getting some interesting segments, some interesting structure. That I really like. So I've added a lot of that dark in that area right here and I'm going to go ahead and uh, start to define that edge a little bit more. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and just use a little bit of vine or I'm sorry some uh, compressed charcoal and just kind of get that edge. Really let that move. You'll notice that, you know, you, you, it's going to be hard to control some of that line because of the texture that you've applied already. So, um, you know, uh, be aggressive with that. I've also added, uh, after I did some of these darks, I did another layer of erasing downward to really get that, these columns. bit of vine charcoal to help me move that charcoal around. Remember that vine charcoal helps that compressed charcoal move a little bit better. Okay. Still want to clean up that edge here so I'm going to get back to my erasing.
adding some of those lines on this side to separate that background, lining it up with my top columns. I'm going back in and adding some definition. Got a little compressed charcoal here. Again, remember to do your best to begin to get into a movement that's dispersing the energy throughout. Adding contrast, remember it's charcoal, you can always get rid of it. And a lot of these uh, practices that you'll be, or this, or this assignment, you know, um, you'll need to, uh, find that quote-unquote rhythm so whatever you have to do to to get into that mindset you know whether it's music whether it's you know um, having your coffee go ahead and find it okay I'm gonna go ahead now and See if I can do a little bit of work. And now I'm, I don't want too much. Do a little bit of work inside it. Let's see what happens there. Huh? I was really reluctant to do that, but let me go ahead. Now I'm just going in between the texture. I want to keep some of that texture. I don't want to darken it too. I want some nice highlights in there. So if I see, if I have paper I'm exposed, I'm going to put some charcoal in there to see what happens. I'm kind of following a structure. See what happens. Maybe I can add some roundness or some dimension to the uh, snake form here. Okay. Go ahead and get my uh, kneaded eraser here. Clean some of that up. Remember, I'm trying to have that highlight reach those spines, too. So I'm going to move all the way, swipe, one swipe, see what happens. All right, I'm liking that. Adds a little something to that center, exposes that that uh interior of that snake form a little bit more makes it part of a part of the tonal conversation we're having here with shadow but remember you're going to apply and then edit all right yeah i'm happy with that Again, just adding some material, finding a uh, finding a direction with some of that texture that I made. Again, I'm still working with that texture I created. Okay, eraser. Clean up that edge. And every time I'm, uh, you see my hand leaving the frame here, I'm twisting, finding another shape. See? And that shape will, you know, change the uh, direction of the line so every mark is its unique little expressive 
statement. Okay. Yeah, I'm liking the way that's looking. That's getting kind of exciting now. Yeah. All right. Remember the main thing: have a have a good time. Okay, I've got one more spot that I want to work on, and it's going to be the top corner here. So I'm just observing. Don't forget to step back. And let me see what I can do up here. This part's been a little intimidating because I, I try to do some work with the gesso up here. I don't know if it's visible, but it didn't really go as planned. So I'm going to see if I can find something. Again, I'm going to go aggressive here. i got my compressed charcoal, and I'm going at it. Sometimes you just got to jump right in and see what happens. So I'm just outlining right now. Okay, now I'm just, I've got charcoal on my hand. Let me see what happens. Oh yeah, I like that. Just, now something is ex being almost like an exposure of some sort. See that twist of brush mark that I was doing? That really worked out nice. I kind of like that I can see that now. Very good. I was a little worried that I wasn't going to like that up there, but now I have a structure of some sort. Let's do some sharpening, get some detail inside there. Got my compressed for my charcoal pencil. That's some defini definition. You know? Clean up that curve form because that's gonna be a strong, that's a strong point to or a focal point for my for the drawing here in general. Alright. Over here. Don't forget about texture, maybe a little bit of cross hatching could be helpful. And here it seems like a little bit too smooth of a gradient in compare, comparison to the rest of the drawing. So I'm going to add a cross hatch there just to give it a little bit of I don't know, process. Okay. So I really am enjoying what's happening here. Um, I might just emphasize a few few areas here. Yep. There you go. Okay, here is the finished drawing of my texture demonstration and uh, I, I like what happened. It's, it's going to be a challenge, I think, for everybody because of, of this, the amount of texture that you have to deal with and almost being comfortable with the, um, the roughness of it. Hence, that's why it's a texture assignment. You have to work with the texture that gesso forces you to, to, to make decisions that nobody wouldn't be there. Again, you know, sometimes the best way to learn how to make art or learn how to draw, again, is, is A, doing it by yourself, just doing it for your own uh, curiosity you can only uh, you are the best uh, teacher is yourself but also is uh, putting hurdles in front of uh, your art or in front of your um, uh, ideas or your processes so you can work through them and, and discover uh, what what happens when these hurdles are in front of you and I think the gesso technique here provides that um, so you already have a structure that you have to deal with uh, that you've already placed down and that the charcoal is going to be real sensitive towards that gesso work or that texture and emphasize uh, uh, all the texture. So you have to work with it. Uh, that's why the eraser, I think, is going to become a, a good, a good uh, tool here to use. So use that eraser, edit out, apply information and edit out information. Um, as you can see here, I have uh, basically a, an easy uh, 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 examples of all of four types of textures. I have the background texture. I have this uh, more organic rib texture. Then I got this painterly 
emphasizing the brush mark texture and then I come in uh, then up here I have interesting rope like texture um, so uh, you know it's a, just just I wanted to do a drawing here that just emphasize all this type of texture that you can achieve and you can make you know I, with, with this assignment I could make a series of work out of just this idea this idea and this idea so um, sometimes when you do these types of assignments you can separate these uh, ideas into whole bodies of work honestly um, so you can really investigate um, certain uh, areas or techniques and that's why creative drawing is so interesting and important is the amount of um, uh, doors that open up and windows that open up for possibilities let's go ahead and do a little zoom in here so we can see what happened um, again you know that's really interesting to me here you know where you have a lot of nice tonal rain, oh, oh, ranges here and it's an infinite amount of, of movement because of the transparency of that uh, layering of all those materials um, you know it can't be recreated uh, and it's because of the approach I think of work like this when you approach it organically and you approach it with a sense of freedom but uh, with a goal in mind or some sort of um, image you will achieve an interesting drawing. Remember, uh, whether it's good or not, or or uh, in comparison to art that's already been made, is not the point. The point is um, you discovering things in the process of drawing, and then, of course, creating something that's never been created before. Um, up here, I really enjoy how how this uh, kind of head form here evolved at the top. And then, of course, the um, the uh, rubbing I did of just the texture, you know, you can't draw that. There's no way to achieve this type of uh, texture and movement without simple um, movements and simple application of material. Um, so, again, uh, much more soul involved in drawing like this than you would if you were just trying to render a, a photographic realistic image of some sort or a simulation. This isn't a simulation. This is a, a, an actual creation, and what you are going to make is our actual creations that never existed before, you know, on the planet. And I think that's what's great about creative drawing is the ability to create imagery that's never been created before. So I really hope you have a good time. I hope that you discover some interesting. Uh, uh, ideas that you can achieve with gesso and charcoal and texture and of course value and uh, transitions of light to dark and um, of course uh, being at peace of mind when you are drawing and experimenting with form and shape. I hope you had a good time and thank you.